There are new developments in the sprawling investigation into the insurrection at the Capitol. The FBI has arrested a Texas man who allegedly helped the insurrectionists use riot shields stolen from police to make a wall against officers. And then through a lit firecracker, a police guarding one of the doors into the Capitol. And there's also this from The Washington Post, quote, a Proud Boys member and his brother from Oregon have been ordered jailed pending trial on federal charges of conspiring to breach the U.S. Capitol on January 6th, including by allegedly wrenching open a door and impeding police using a pole with a don't tread on me flag. These details about the rioters and their undoubtedly violent actions are in stark contrast to attempts by the former guy to whitewash everything that happened on January 6th. Trump's comments that the attackers posed, quote, zero threat, are now getting pushback from his own former chief of staff. I was surprised to hear the president say that um, yesterday or earlier this week or something like that. Clearly, there were people who were behaving themselves, and then there were people who absolutely were not. But to come out and say that everybody was fine and there was no risk is just, that's manifestly false. People died. Um, other people were severely injured. There are videos mm -hmm. of folks behaving themselves and protesting peacefully, but they should not have been there. And there was it's not right to say there was no risk. I don't know how you can say that when people were killed. Joining our conversation, Tim Miller, a former spokesman with the RNC, now a contributor to The Bulwark, and Kim Atkins and Claire McCaskill are still with us. Tim, I've got to start with you. Um, so I don't know where to start here. The, the, the problem <laughs> is that some saying, isn't that some saying kumbaya and some murdered a police officer with bear spray potentially. The problem here is that they were all there to disrupt constitutionally mandated process of government, and their mission statement was hang Mike Pence. Yeah, Mick was surprised to hear that from Donald Trump. I, I'm not sure where he's been the last five years in his four different jobs that he held in the Trump administration. If he was surprised that his former boss was going to lie about this, um, as he has, you know, for about everything since he's been in public life. Uh, here's the thing, Nicole. Uh, for the Trump uh, party, you know, for the Trump experiment to continue on, they need to memory hole and spin the particulars of why Officer Sicknick died that day, of why the Capitol was stormed, of, of the fact that there was an insurrection at all. And so that is why you see Donald Trump taking kind of one strategy, which is everybody there was nice. Every, uh, there was nothing to see here. The Ron Johnson approach. That's why you see Mick Mulvaney doing the Well, there were some people there for a good reason. And then there were a few bad apples approach. Uh, both of those are completely false. And they are they are telling that lie so that their political project can go on, because this is not a typical kind of political lie. You know, this is not uh, telling a fib about how the CBO, you know, might score your tax cut uh, one way or another way. I, this is a lie about whether or not there was a deadly insurrection on our capital that was aimed at interrupting the peaceful transition of power. That is unacceptable. If you were involved in that, you cannot uh, continue in good faith in our politics and our democratic process. And so rather than take accountability for that and, and try to change, uh, you know, these guys are going to try to spin it or pretend as if it didn't happen. And, and the piece of it, I think, that I struggle with the most, Kim Atkins, and, and, it, and I am re-traumatized every time I watch the video of the Trump supporters with their Trump flags and Confederate flags, they're about equal of each, rolling over, physically stampeding law enforcement, and then reading the charging documents of what they're being charged for. They're being charged now. I mean, now they're up to conspiracy, conspiracy to commit sedition. The Republican project, as Tim just said, to rewrite the history of 1-6 is perhaps one of the most sinister twists in the Trump tale. But as you said, it's not surprising. I mean, what's striking, and, and in this case, yes, we are reaching conspiracy. We've talked before on the show about how the initial charges of trespassing and other things are, are meant a, as place savers because prosecutors want to charge what they're able to prove. So we don't see the most serious charges at the beginning, but now you're starting to see them. A, a picture very clearly is being painted by prosecutors in this case at just how um, vicious and how dangerous and deadly and undemocratic that day was. But if you're looking at this also, Nicole, on a day like today where we're talking about the Derek Chauvin trial, we're seeing in cases like this, in trials like this, where black people are deemed to be dangerous. And that warrants, in the eyes of defense in this case, police officers to use deadly force just because of that inherent danger 
posed by black people. Yet, when you see these insurrectionists who literally stormed the Capitol, who used force, who crushed, uh, tried to crush a police officer, used bear spray, and left people dead in the wake of that, you're seeing, whether it's Donald Trump or Senator Ron Johnson or others, declare over and over again that they weren't afraid of those people. They're not dangerous to them. What's the difference there? These are people who actually harm police officers. George Floyd did not. Yet that potential threat by the way he looked uh, is likely used as a defense in his own death. It's really, it's disheartening and it's something that a lot of Americans see very clearly. Claire, just really quickly, Donald Trump seems to not understand that he denigrates law enforcement when he says in an interview, my insurrectionists were hugging them. Yeah, uh, the video is in everyone's hard drive. You can't forget the video of the police officer being pulled down the stairs and then people taking flagpoles that American flags had flown on, Trump flags had flown on, Confederate, and beating that police officer or trying to gouge their eyes out. This is not something that people are going to forget. So they can lie all they want to about how sweet all these people were. But the video is powerful and it's not going anywhere. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.